thanks to all my patrons, especially Kevin Butler and Lana Golikova, for making this happen. Hey, Cypher here, and I finally watched American Animals. I did so just for fun, but afterwards I knew I needed to talk about it here. This film is about a bungled heist from 2004 in Lexington, Kentucky at Transylvania University, or Transy as locals call it, which is the oldest college east of the Alleghenies since its founding in 1780. The library's special collections holds some treasured books, most prominent of which was a series of ornithological paintings. Simply titled Birds of America, this naturalist named John James Audubon had traveled across the United States in the 1820s and 30s. He had some help, but most of the paintings were his. A rare double elephant folio edition of these prints were donated to Transy by Clara Peck of New York in 1982. Along with it were some other Audubon prints, such as the viviparous quadrupeds of North America. It's these valuable prints for which the movie is named. But there are plenty of other important and rare books in the collection, including the Book of St. Albans, several other animal prints, and first editions of Charles Darwin's books. So Transy has some valuable stuff in their special collections. Some kids noticed this in 2004 and hatched a plan to steal some of the works. The collection is a department ran by only one librarian. The robbers set up an appointment, tied her up, and made off with a few volumes. They couldn't sell the stolen merchandise and were easily caught, ending up spending more than seven years in prison for their misdeeds. It's a pretty simple story, nothing too flashy. So why is this movie worth talking about? Well, that's because of what genre it is. As the open screen shows, it's not based on a true story, it's a docudrama, and a spectacular one at that. They do a lot with this premise. First off, they've got all the actual people involved doing interviews, but they take that one step further. At points, they interact with their on-screen counterparts. So this is how you remember? Not exactly. But even further, they argue about whose version of events are correct, sometimes changing minor details, all the way to possibly fabricating an entire chunk of the story. All of that is laid bare and we're simply told by the leader of the gang of misfits, I guess you just have to take my word for it. Now that's incredible. It's not just the unreliable narrator excuse. I think that's an easy cop-out for the laziest of screenwriters, and does nothing to help the viewer discern what is to be taken seriously and what isn't. No, the movie delves into that, with a climax that casts doubt on the main narrative. It's amazing to see and does more than merely having a twist. What a twist! This is showing something not only about filmmaking, but how history itself is made. Too often do I see denialists use a granule of doubt to ignore important and difficult history, and this shows how such a granule does not disturb the facts of the matter. Now this is a bit of a spoiler, so you've been warned. Anyways, one part of the story has the leader go to the Netherlands to meet with some sketchy art dealers, but the rest of the gang dispute the authenticity of this. That's most likely he just made the whole thing up. Did it happen? We simply don't know. Considering the heist itself was based on a lot of movies, going so far as to actually call each other by Mr. Pink and whatnot, as though they've watched Reservoir Dogs too many times. So the film, of course, indulges in that genre to make it exciting, while simultaneously emphasizing the folly of everyone involved. What we do know is that the only person who could know says it did happen. I guess you just have to take my word for it. And upon that flimsy evidence is how we get the funny scene of that sketchy meeting. This casts doubt upon whether it even happened, but one thing is for sure, that they definitely dropped this guy off at an airport and picked him up later. That's corroborated by multiple witnesses. I guess you could find the passenger manifest and customs entry logs, but it just doesn't matter enough to the story whether that's true or not. What matters is that this guy says it happened, and that's what convinced everyone that the heist could work. You'll hear me say this several times elsewhere, and I really think it's the best standard by which to judge historical films, and that's that inaccuracy is acceptable as long as it doesn't affect the narrative. Historians are storytellers too, and we have to use the evidence we've got to weave these tales together. If filmmakers are incompetent enough to mess up the historical narrative they profess to be basing their film upon, then they shouldn't make that film. It's history, not some plaything to morph into whatever somebody wants. If you're not good at telling the story, then don't tell it. Let somebody else do that. Because too many filmmakers are too incompetent to touch a historical story. 
but this film does it right. It shows how a story like this is made, its issues, and how it accounts for those issues. The only major inaccuracy is that they didn't film at Transy itself, but I don't think that matters one bit. So I highly recommend checking out American Animals. It's fun, creative, and deepens one's understanding of how docudramas can be made, and therefore history itself. Thank you